All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me. It is corn meter time. I know it's the middle of April and a lot of guys should be uh, already planting, but I don't picture anybody is. So take advantage of these snow days and double check your planter. Go through your finger pickup units. This is the old finger pickup unit. Fantastic old unit. Replace any part. Now, I, I, I don't love everything Precision makes on their new side of stuff. Uh, everything Precision made for this was 100% an improvement over the John Deere OEM part. Um, if you're an absolute bleed green guy, suck it up and uh, order anonymously through Shoop to get the Precision version of your parts. You, you will not regret it. Um, but yeah, let's tear one apart and see what to inspect and, and what's all going on in there. This is a great, great, great thing for a farmer to do himself. The better you understand your corn planter, the better job you can help it do and and you know when we're trying to save pennies to the acre uh doing these yourself is is a great place to start so let's tear it apart and see what we're looking at all right guys these are super super simple um they they're fast they're easy once you understand them you'll you'll wonder why you were spending money at your dealership well, there's our seed cover when you put it back together or when you remount it to the hopper you don't not have to reef down on them nuts and bolts this one's already cracking out um, because it's been reefed down on a little too much you just get them snug um, we don't have to get carried away about it so there we are okay so there's our our meter unit itself the meter just rolls and uh, oops I'm sitting on the bench um, it rolls and then you see it flicks the seed in and the seed just follows that belt down to the to the ground um, so what we're going to look at we're going to look at here at these flags all these flags we need to inspect we need to inspect that brush so we pop that nut off there normally is a retaining ring on there with a cotter key um, but I grabbed an old unit out of the shed just to, uh, for demonstration purposes. Well, that was just three screws. <clears throat> it is not uncommon if these units have been sitting for a while, um, or whatever for these screws, if they've never been rebuilt in a number of years, um, these little tiny flathead screws, they can get rusted in there. Um, I usually just take a grinder then and grind the screw head off and then with the plate off, then we can uh, either weld a little nut onto the bolt or get a hold of it with a vice grip. So we're doing it just exactly as your tech would do it. If you brought him a meter in the shop, you're just gonna rip it apart So there's our back plate and here's our assembly so now in the shop you're to this point now now is where we start our inspection and we start rebuilding <clears throat> first thing we got is our, our wheel first thing we're going to check is the little nubs down here these drive lugs we want to make sure that they're smooth on the leading edge and that, that the belt has worn a, a gouge in them what can happen if they get gouged is they'll stick there's a possibility they stick to the belt. <clears throat> we got a kernel in our in our seed belt. So the kernels ride in the, the seed belt there. If that cog gets a gouge on the back side, or if the belt gets old and brittle, um, but for the most part it's that gouge on the back side, the belt could have a chance of following, and you see the one kernel already slipped down. So you would have had a double here and nothing here um, we're, if we're moving along. This one already fell all the way down. Um, that's a little over-exaggeration, but it, 
if it sticks just that little bit, it gets that one kernel to drop down and you get skips and doubles, which would make you believe that your meter is bad, but it's actually your wheel and belt are wore out. <clears throat> For the belts, or to finish on the wheel, the precision wheel is nice. Uh, they give an indicator as to how the paddle is supposed to go and a direction it's supposed to turn. It's just a precision wheel. It, um, I like it. Between the wheel and the belt, they alter the timing a little bit versus the John Deere, which makes it a, a more true. So there's the window that the seed goes through. The John Deere paddles were more in the window, um, something like that. So there was always that little chance to get a skip double back here where the precisions, they center it better. Um, the precision belt is cupped to try and get that seed down the center so it doesn't drop along an edge and get bouncing down the seed tube. It, it, it really is a big improvement. It sounds silly, but it, it really is. That little bit of difference helps a lot. So we check the belt, make sure that none of the lugs are tearing off. Um, we flex it to make sure that the body of the belt isn't cracking anywhere, that it's pliable and really looks good. Um, for, the, for the few dollars that each component on its own costs, if in doubt, throw it out. At, at $100 an acre of seed and on the, you know, a couple hundred plants to a bushel of corn, it, it does not take long for it to cost you more money to try and be cheap. Um, this is not one of them spots we want to be cheap. So you roll it, get a feel for how it rolls, make sure the little bearing turns nice, um, and just make sure everything feels good. Um, then we come to our wheel. All we got is a bushing and a plastic wheel. We just make sure that it fits nice in there, that the wheel isn't just all slopped out, you know, that it that it fits nice. It's that simple. <clears throat> Now we start rebuilding. I told you these get this thing is simple and fast. Um, with a 7 16 wrench and a screwdriver, you can rebuild them out in the field. <clears throat> so we get to our backing plate. The precision one has a softer part because the seed gets flicked against this tin. You can actually hear it hit that tin. Um, personally, if you really like this one, it's it's in good shape. I would just take some 80 grit or a flap wheel grinder. And just sand this roughness off and repaint it um, and reuse it if you wanted to or just get the precision backer plate and it, it does a nicer job um, seeds they have found that seeds it doesn't take much of an impact on a seed to affect germination and so every, everything we can do to help that seed have a quality travel is only to our benefit so we put the cover back on we like our belt, we like the roller, um, so we just put everything back together. We're already, we're already at that stage. It's a phenomenal, simple meter. Again, we do not need to torque the crap out of, out of these. All right, now again, we, we roll it and we feel what it feels like, kind of get an idea of how it's turning. Because um, I set them by feel, I do not set them by measurements. <clears throat> Our back plate, here we got a couple things to check. There's a singulator bump up here. Um, I don't know how to get, there you can see it, that little bump. That'll actually wear smooth. Um, if, if that bump is not a nice bump, change the back plate this rust in here i would change the back plate because that rust is an easy way to cause damage to the skin of the kernel would it cause one percent damage i don't know uh, up here you got a lot of pressure on that kernel in that flag and it's easy to cause damage <clears throat> for the for the few bucks that the precision one one the precision one is a, a poly type material with a metal band that's replaceable uh, so you, by replacing these with the precision ones, you get rid of this rust issue altogether. Um, but if they're rusty like that, man, at 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 a hundred bucks an acre on seed, I, I would just throw it away. I, I would not risk it. I would just throw it away. If you forgot how you put it on, they only go on one way. You got a seed opening, and that opening only lines up 
with the bolts in one spot. And so we put him back together. Normally we'd never seize the bolts. I am not reusing this meter. It is probably going to go to a shelf for parts. Um, Again, you just got to get them snug enough to stay. We're not torquing anything down. So let's just say our back plate looked really good. The hump is there. The brush, these brushes, you just take the one screw out and the brush just comes off. Um, if That one don't look too bad. I, I would probably run that one again. If you're starting to notice that you're getting just too many doubles, then, then maybe take it out, but swap it out. But, you know, that one does not look bad. For as cheap as these brushes are, again, if you question the condition, just put a new one in. Um, it, it's not worth hassling. So the finger, here's the heart and soul of our seed. We kind of just saw how it carries. We'll go through that again. On the flag, what we're looking for is that every one of these springs are in good shape. Make sure every finger is free to move. And... Uh, then at the bottom here, make sure that this isn't getting rubbed through, through that sidewall. You want to make sure that they're still flat out here, that it's still nice in a round tube frame. They'll actually wear flat, and then that kind of affects how good they can do. Um, when you go to put it back, there's a lug here for keying into, and then we got our cross. Our cross for the roll pin, and that lug goes into that notch on the base here so sometimes they're a little bit of an irritant to get back together there we go it flopped down and you can tell you're in place because the plastic is down against the the chrome plate now some guys go with two to four inch pounds of torque on this nut to tighten it up I always went by feel, so you want it, I always set it stiff enough so when you're rolling these roll pins by hand that they almost hurt or they actually start to hurt a little bit. So we can see at the bottom the flags are open, that they're open down there, see how they're lifted up, and then up top here they're closed, and that's how they're going to hold that seed. If we can't put two in there, I don't know, by hand. So it's going to roll them up. I want him to stay to see if we can simulate that, that double bump. There you go. It kind of rolled over that. It wiggles the seed and the brush kind of helps knock that seed out and the seed would fall back into our thing. And then it's going to come... And it gets flicked in there. Um, right there, the finger starts to lift as it flicks it in there. And then again, it would follow the belt down and out. <clears throat> if that cam is wore, you'll notice that the fingers would not be riding nice like that. Um, so just make sure that they're all, all the fingers are riding nice it feels good it's nice and smooth it's not stiff and loose stiff and loose um, and then I just go good finger snug tight until yep yep that was a, a little too much so it's good and stiff on my hand on the back side like I said and then I just keep rolling it for a few times until I'm entertained and uh, then we put the cover plate on, and we're good to go. The big thing is, okay, the, the big thing is, do you need to send these out to be ran on a test bench? If it's your very first time doing it, kind of make note of how you did it. If you are going to take them in, when you take them in, they're going to have nice medium round seeds um, that 
plant very easy through all the meters. Um, all they're going to do is they're going to look at that brush. They're going to kind of look at this stuff. 90% of what they're going to do is adjust this nut. Um, if you're way too loose on this nut, that's how you get a lot of skips because you're not putting enough pressure here. And the seeds, as this row unit's actually kind of bouncing and shaking through the field, it's easy that if there ain't enough pressure on this plate, um, that it can drop the seeds and then you get skips. Um, you get skips. Doubles, it, it, I don't think they're just an over, they're not a high risk double machine. If you torque way down on this nut, um, on an old six row when you just had a single drive wheel or a four row where you just had a single drive wheel, um, if you torque this nut down too hard on dry loose soil, you could actually get your population way off because it will actually drag enough that between six of these units, they might actually have that wheel slip a little bit. The best way, instead of spending $30 at your dealer per row unit, what I would do is go through it, check your singulator bump, your brush, all these fingers like we just talked about, and then um, take it to the field. Tie your closing wheels up so you can see that slot stay open. What we gotta do is that seed should, you know, we should see that seed sitting down in our slot down there um, with the tail wheel, with the closing wheel assembly up. What we want to do is we pick our transmission uh, for whatever population we're on and on all the rows you have that up and you plant you know a few hundred feet and then right then lift up whatever stop and then 17 and a half feet on 30 inch rows is a one one thousandth of an acre and you go back and you count on each row if you got a six row planter you check all six rows uh, you count in that 17 and a half feet, how many kernels are in every row, and you average that out. Your transmission might say you're set for 28. Uh, maybe you had 28 fall, maybe you had 22 fall, maybe you had 36 fall. That's not uncommon, um, but that's one way you verify your actual population that you're planting. Then you're also looking for skips and doubles. Skips would be if the plants are supposed to be seven inches apart, well, you got one here and you got one here a foot away, that means you had a skip somewhere. If you got two that are within a couple inches of each other um, or right next to each other and then a foot away another one, that, that's your, your double. Um, but yeah, I kinda, I kinda had a brain fart there. Um, that's your double. If you got two together, that's your double. And then obviously if you're missing one, that's a skip, pretty, pretty basic. But evaluate that on all six rows and make sure all six rows are doing a good job uh, that you're at the population you want that they're not doing a lot of skips and doubles um, and there's some of the row unit that can help if your <clears throat> soil is rough and the boxes are bouncing back there a lot that will affect the the singulation the skips and doubles of these these seed meters so you want some down pressure springs on that planter or uh, slow down or smooth the ground, do something to stop them from bouncing. If it's simply drop a gear, so yep, they're gonna follow the ground, but they don't wanna be following the ground. Um, so slow down, do whatever you need to do to, to fix that bounce to help your seed meter out. Um, but yeah, even if, even if you spent the 30 bucks to have your dealership uh, pre, uh, test bench these, I would still lift your closing wheels and follow up and verify that they're at the population you want, verify that they're doing you want with your seed, because there's a big difference between small flats, medium rounds, and large flats, and large rounds. Every meter is gonna handle them a little bit different. Um, so always verify your work. But we went through that really fast, because that's how easy these are. You literally have this plate, this finger pickup, and your, your belt and stuff to check, Super simple, super easy. Get a Shoop catalog and you will run these meters forever um, and they will do a fantastic job for you. Guys, I hope somebody gets some value off this video. Um, if you guys want me to do a better job of one or more in depth, let me know. But I think I, I went through a basic because they are basic. It is that simple, guys. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.